Welcome everyone. Welcome to Office Hours with Michael Kitsis. So our, our topic today, I want to talk about the Department of Labor fiduciary rule as it ties into broker dealers. I, I'm here at the airport. I'm actually traveling to the FPA Dallas Fort Worth chapter for their big annual symposium event, which is going on today and tomorrow. I was actually speaking this morning for a, a large broker dealer event. And, and as they're trying to get a hold of what is the future of the broker dealer model? What is the future of working under a broker dealer platform? And you know, how do we how are we going to structure our businesses in the future? And and this is one of the most common questions I'm getting these days around the all the Department of Labor discussion is this idea like, okay, if, if commissions are kind of going away under DOL fiduciary and I work at a broker dealer, do I still need a broker dealer or should I ditch my broker dealer if commissions are going away? So I, I want to tackle this question head on. And and I first I think we have to frame what DOL fiduciary actually says. So first of all, although fiduciary rules have been implemented in other countries in recent years, the UK has done it and banned commissions. Australia did it with what was called their future of financial advice reforms and banned commissions. The Department of Labor rule does not actually ban commissions. It does apply new scrutiny. It says if you want to still earn commissions, you have to go through and sign a best interest contract with your clients that says you acknowledge you're a fiduciary. You have to adhere to what are called impartial conduct standards, which means you give advice in the best interest of the client for reasonable compensation in a manner that doesn't mislead them about what they're buying and what you're being compensated for. But it's it's actually, commissions will still be permitted under the new rules. And, and that's an important thing to understand. Maybe some of the size of front end commissions might come down a little. I think you'll see slightly smaller commissions and a little bit more trail structures. But commissions are not, are not banned. But if you want to earn commissions, you have to go through this whole best interest contract structure. And that's not even just in terms of the advisor and what they sign with clients, acknowledge your fiduciary and adhere to the best interest or the impartial conduct standards. That also creates requirements for the broker dealer. They have to create their own policies and procedures to substantiate that advisors will be giving best interest advice and that they haven't created an environment that's going to cause conflicted, compens conflicted advice that leads to uh, conflicted outcomes that are not in the best interest of the client. And broker dealers or really any financial institution that goes through this will also have a lot of new disclosure requirements that they have to deal with. So broker dealers are at their own crossroads about how to handle this. And, and part of the decision-making challenge for broker dealers is there's an expedited version of this best interest contract rule, and it's called the level fee fiduciary alternative. Now, in order to qualify for this, as the name implies, you have to get only level fees, which basically means AUM fees or flat fees like a retainer fee or an hourly fee, some fee that does not go up or down based on where you steer the clients. Right? The whole point of this is if you could go to higher compensation, higher commission product or lower compensation, lower commission product, that's a conflict. If everything you do gives you the same comp, it doesn't matter whether they invest in A or B or C, that's a level fee environment. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be client fees uh, as long as the total compensation is level. So this could even be level fees because you use uh, C-share mutual funds for everything and they all give the same 1% 12B1 fee. Technically, it's a commission from the company, but if it's level across all the investments that you offer your clients, this is still a valid way to navigate the best interest uh, standard. Now, you still have to acknowledge your fiduciary. You still have to do a uh, uh, follow the impartial conduct standards that you're going to give best interest advice for reasonable compensation in a manner that uh, uh, is not misleading in terms of the, the advertising what you communicate to clients. But for those who operate under a level fee fiduciary standard, all the policies and procedures requirements that institutions have to create to oversee this advice process aren't applied if you do the level fee fiduciary. Kind of the presumption is if you're going to give conflicted advice, you need policies and procedures to manage it. If you just give level fee advice, the conflicts of interest are mitigated enough by the fact that you you don't have as many conflicts of interest when compensation is level, that any institution that wants to follow this, much easier compliance obligations. Re reduce policies and procedures rules, reduce disclosure requirements, because the idea, again, is, is if you've eliminated the conflict of interest, there's not as much to manage. So the reason why that's significant is from the broker-dealer end, it means broker-dealers are at a crossroads here about what they want to be in the future. And I think what you're going to see is three different types of broker-dealer environments are going to emerge out of this uh, uh, DOL fiduciary crossroads. 
The first will be the level fee fiduciary broker dealer. And the level fee fiduciary broker dealer is frankly a really big change from the traditional broker dealer model. Because in order to qualify for level fee, not only does the client have to pay level across all of the options, but the financial institution has to earn level across all the options. So backend overrides wouldn't be allowed. Uh, um, uh, revenue shares wouldn't be allowed. Shelf space uh, agreements would be problematic. Uh, companies will be under significant pressure to restructure their business models. These broker-dealer companies will be under significant pressure to restructure their whole model in order to facilitate this. And I think actually the way you'll see it play out is broker-dealers will create what I call the, the sandbox of options. All right, advisors, here's a whole bunch of things in the sandbox. All of these have level compensation across them. As long as you choose anything in this little sandbox of choices, you're okay. You're a level fee fiduciary and we're a level fee broker dealer because we've uh, designed the sandbox to all be level fee compensation. And off you go on your merry way. But you'll only be able to use the, the stuff in the sandbox. I guess it's called the toolbox. Like You'll only be able to use the tools in the toolbox and nothing else. And, and frankly, one of the ways that broker-dealers will probably differentiate as level fee fiduciary broker-dealers is the, the, the depth of their toolbox, how many things they give you in the toolbox that you can use. Now, the second kind of broker-dealer will be the ones that do the full best interest contract exemption. They'll have a broader suite of products. They might have proprietary products. They might have uh, commit. Well, they'll have some commissions. They can have commissions. Uh, again, probably not the huge mega upfront commissions anymore, but they can have commission products. They can have a wider range of products. But now they have contracts, flicks of interest that are introduced. So they'll have to go through the full best interest contract exemption, which basically means more policies and procedures for the firm, more compliance for the broker dealer or for the broker who's going to feel the parent company overseeing them more, trying to enforce these policies and procedures to make sure that the advice is not conflicted advice. So in essence, what you'll find is the full best interest contract broker dealers that include commissions and proprietary products, you're going to feel as the broker more compliance, oversight, pressure down on you, wider range of products, but more compliance pressure looking at how you're using them and how you're implementing them for clients. Then the third type of broker-dealer I think you're going to see is what I call the, the after-tax only broker-dealer or the non-qualified only broker-dealer because the reality is the Department of Labor fiduciary rules only apply to retirement accounts and retirement investors. So one way that a broker-dealer can just completely avoid all the DOL fiduciary rules, just don't touch retirement dollars. Don't give advice on retirement rollovers and, re and, and anything relating to retirement accounts. Just work with after-tax brokerage accounts, non-qualified dollars. You can you know, sell your non-traded REITs. You can do your non-qualified annuities. You can do your equity index products and, and no DOL scrutiny at all as long as you only do non-qualified dollars and don't touch retirement accounts. So you know, in terms of this question of do I need to change broker-dealers or ditch the broker-dealer after DOL fiduciary. So first of all, you're going to have to see what, you, what your broker-dealer wants to be in the future, You know what, what they're going to do in this DOL transition. Are they going to be a level fee fiduciary broker-dealer? Are they going to be a full best interest contract broker-dealer? Or are they going to be a non-qualified only broker-dealer? Now, the broker-dealer gets to choose because they're the ones ultimately, technically the best interest contract will be signed between the client and the financial institution. So the broker dealer's kind of butt backside is on the line. So they're going to choose whether they want to be level fee fiduciary BDs, full best interest contract BDs, or non-qualified only BDs. And they, they basically have six months to decide. It, they, it's actually 11 months before the rules take effect in April of 2017. But realistically, broker dealers are going to have to decide by the end of the year because when, we, when they go through all of their sort of annual updates, changes to the grid, all the other things that broker dealers do to adjust compensation every year, they're going to have to figure this out by the end of the year so they can communicate it to the brokers on the platform so those folks know what's coming in 2017. So I think you're going to start hearing a lot about this as we get into the fall and your broker dealer decides you know, which, which one they're going to be. Now, from your perspective, if you work at a broker dealer, if you're on a broker dealer platform, whether you want to stay or not is going to be driven by which of these the broker dealer chooses and then what, what you want to be. So if you are want to operate in a level fee environment, you say, hey, I'm just going to do my whole business model on AUM fees and retainers. That's great, but if all you want to do is a level fee environment, you probably won't want to be at a full best interest contract broker dealer because it's going to feel like a lot of compliance oversight for things that don't actually apply to you because you're a level fee. 
If, on the other hand, you want the full range of products, you want to be able to still earn commissions for whatever's left of commissions, you want the wider range of what might be available at a full best interest contract broker-dealer, if your broker-dealer goes level fee fiduciary only, you're not going to want to be there. You're going to want to switch to a broker-dealer that actually does full best interest contract and does the full range. And then likewise, if you want to be a holistic advisor and your broker-dealer says, nah, we're just going to do non-qualified only and avoid the DOL, you probably won't want to be there. I mean, realistically, I think any broker dealer that makes a decision to do non-qualified only is basically putting a line in the sand saying, we're not actually about advice. We're just about product sales. Because I don't know how you give advice if you're going to exclude everything that has to do with retirement accounts. But if you just want to be a, a intermediary that facilitates sales, you can go sell to non-qualified after-tax dollars only, be that platform for any brokers that want to go sell and do that at least until the rules change again at some point down the road. So, you know, if you're an advisor thinking about this, frankly, it's, it's too soon to make a shift right now. I, I would not be, you know, up and dropping your broker dealer now. But the decision for you that you need to be thinking about over the next six months is, do you want your advisory firm in the future to operate like a level fee fiduciary? or to have a broader range of commission products, recognizing that if you choose the commission angle, you are gonna face more compliance oversight and, and that'll be part of the trade-off in your business. Not just more compliance oversight, but you know, the, the firm more up in your business, maybe less control. You might even see lower payouts and higher costs from your broker-dealer platform because it will be more expensive for them to comply with the full best interest contract. So you have to decide what you want your business to be over the next six months about, well, over the next six months, you have to decide what you want your business to be in the future. Then as we get into the end of the year, you should start to see from your broker dealer how they're going to retool after the DOL fiduciary rule. And you can decide then, all right, I want to be a level fee fiduciary. Does this broker dealer make sense? Or frankly, does any broker dealer make sense? You might even go RIA. If you still want to do commissions, okay, I need to make sure I'm at a best interest contract broker dealer. And then you can start asking questions. Well, what's the compliance going to look like? What are the suite of products and services going to look like? How is this going to impact my life as a, as a broker on your platform? Uh, and Or are you at a broker dealer that just says non-qualified only, which again, I think if you're an advisor, means you, you got to leave and find one that at least can do the full range of advice on the full types of accounts, unless you really just want to be a product salesperson for a suite of products. So that's the environment. It, it's, it's going to start with what do you want your business to be in the future? and then looking to your broker dealer towards the end of the year to see what do they want to be and is there alignment? You know, do, does their vision of the future fit your vision of the future? If so, great, you may stay put. If their vision of the future is different than yours because they want to be full best interest contract, you want to be a level fee fiduciary or vice versa, then you've got a mismatch and you may, may be looking at changing broker dealers or again, if you want to be a level fee fiduciary, even reevaluating, do you want to be a level fee fiduciary at a broker dealer? or just be a level fee fiduciary at an RIA. So I hope that helps a little as just some of the, the landscape of making decisions about broker-dealer affiliations, whether it makes sense to stay put. Uh, don't jump ship yet. Uh, regardless really of what side you're on, it probably doesn't make sense to jump ship yet. But be figuring out what you want your business to be in the future because the decision is coming in a couple of months where you're going to have to evaluate, do you actually want to stay at the broker-dealer with whatever it chooses, or do you need to go somewhere else to fit your model? So I hope that helps us some food for thought. Thanks for hanging out uh, uh, with Office Hours with Michael Kitsis. Uh, we try at least for 1 p.m. East Coast time every Tuesday. Uh, but thanks again for joining us. Stay tuned next week and have a great day, everyone. Take care.